Caesar is Latin for terrible lizard. A good definition is hard to find because they tend to include known living animals unless specifically defined as extinct. Dinosaurs are known from fossils. They can include individual bones, whole skeletons, things like eggs, footprints, and other traces. Dinosaurs are known to have two hip types. There are lizard hip dinosaurs, and bird hip dinosaurs. Now the irony is that it is claimed that birds descended from the lizard hip dinosaurs and not the bird hip ones. Here is one of the largest of the seropod dinosaurs called the Brachiosaurus. They are known for their long necks, large bodies, and long tails. Here is another seropod dinosaur called the Diplodocus. Note the same pattern of long neck, large body, and long tail. It is quite possible that these seropod dinosaurs are actually varieties of the same created kind. Now, not all dinosaurs were big. Here is one of the smaller ones called Oviactor. Here's one of the meat-eating dinosaurs, known as Allosaurus. Here is the king of the meat-eating dinosaurs, and perhaps the most famous of all dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, based on similarities, it is quite possible that Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus were the same created kind. This is a Stegosaurus. It is well known for the planks on its back and spikes on its tail. These are a Corythosaurus and Trechodon. They are similar enough that they could be the same original created kind. Here we have the Styrocosaurus with many spikes on its ridge and a monocolonus with one horn and no spikes. Could this be the unicorns mentioned in the Bible? Because unicorn simply means one horn. These are another famous type of dinosaur called Triceratops. These three plant eaters are similar enough that they are probably the same original created kind. Pterodactyls, while not technically dinosaurs, are commonly associated with them. These are flying reptiles with wings similar to those of a bat. This is a type of pterodactyl called the Rompharynchus. Note the long tail, giving it a snake-like appearance. Another animal commonly associated with dinosaurs that lived in the water is a plesiosaur. Note the long neck and large body with fins.
Using the anti-biblical atheistic geological column, dinosaurs are placed within the Mesozoic, which is alleged to have lasted from 250 million to 65 million years ago. This is the picture that evolutionists want everyone to have of dinosaurs. Millions of years of suffering and death before man. However, the following slide is a much more realistic picture of dinosaurs. Yes, this is a more realistic picture of dinosaurs because they lived with man. This is not just a matter of trying to interpret them in light of the Bible, but there is actual evidence that shows that man and dinosaurs have lived together. There is actually a surprising amount of evidence that man and dinosaurs have lived together. Nazca tombs in the desert of Peru often preserve amazing artifacts from the Nazca culture about 700 AD. They include, among other things, here is some pottery from one of those tombs with an image on it that resembles a seropod dinosaur. They also include tapestry, which also depicts images of what looks like seropod dinosaurs. Here is a close-up of one of these images. Note the long neck, large tail, and large body. Now, while this is clearly not intended to be a realistic image, the resemblance to a seropod dinosaur is definitely uncanny. These are a sample of what are called the Ica stones. These stones are also found in Nazca tombs in Peru. About a third of them contain pictures of recognizable types of dinosaurs. Some of them show images of people interacting with dinosaurs showing that they did indeed live together. Here is one that contains several pictures of seropod dinosaurs. Now some people selling these stones have claimed to have carved them themselves to stay out of jail because the real ones are national treasures of Peru and it is a crime to sell them. Also, a number of fake stones have shown up over the years, but the real ones can be identified by a patina that covers them, including the drawings, that take several hundred years to form. Among those with this patina include many stones with pictures of dinosaurs on them. Here is a print of a Mesopotamian cylinder seal that depicts what are clearly seropod dinosaurs. Here is a Roman mosaic that also depicts a couple of animals that appear to be seropod dinosaurs with their necks intertwined. Here is a drawing by Indians of what is clearly a seropod dinosaur at Natural Bridge National Park. It is accompanied by similar drawings of other animals that we know the local Indians would have been familiar with. Here 
is a picture from Australian Aboriginal folklore of a group of hunters killing a plesiosaur that had apparently eaten someone. This picture shows familiarity with the animal's digestive system, which would only exist if they actually had encountered the animals alive and killed them. So are dinosaurs mentioned in the Bible? Now the word dinosaur does not appear in the Bible, but the King James Version was translated in 1611, and the word dinosaur was not invented until 1841. So naturally we would not expect to find the word dinosaur itself in the King James Bible. Furthermore, most modern translations were written by people who believed that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, and so they would not use the term. However, the Bible does refer to dinosaurs. It calls them dragons. Dragons are mentioned 37 times in the Bible. They are mentioned six times with known real animals. These include Deuteronomy 32, 33, Job 30, 29, Psalms 91, 13, Isaiah 34, 13, Isaiah 43, 20, and Jeremiah 14, 6. Flying serpents are mentioned twice in Isaiah 14, 29 and Isaiah 30, 6. Both times are with known real animals. They could be a description of pterodactyls. In Job chapter 40, God describes an animal called behemoth. The description matches that of a seropod dinosaur. Job 40, 15 through 17. Behold now behemoth, which I made with thee. He eats grass, has an ox. Lo, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moves his tail as a cedar, and the sinews of his stones are wrapped together. The description here clearly matches that of a seropod dinosaur. Now some people have tried to claim that this was an elephant or a hippopotamus, but they have tails like little ropes and not like a cedar tree. God takes all of Job 41 to describe a fierce sea reptile called Leviathan. The description is of a very intimidating, fire-breathing sea reptile. The fossil record has a lot of candidates for this creature. The fire-breathing part of Leviathan is referred to in Job 41.21. His breath kindles coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. So the big question is, were dinosaurs on the ark? After all, they were kind of big. However, the ark was a very big boat. It was 450 feet long, 45 feet high, and 75 feet wide. This comes to a whopping 1.52 million cubic feet, which is equivalent to 522 railroad stock cars. You may not be aware of this, but history is full of stories about people encountering dragons. St. George, the patron saint of England, is said to have killed a dragon. He was an early Christian martyr under Roman rule in 303 AD. The village of Bull Dragon contains a carved stone of Pictish origin, said to mark the place where a knight called Martin killed the dragon that had devoured nine maidens. In Cawthorn, also known as South Yorkshire, a flying dragon once lived in the well, now called the Serpent's Well, that was often seen flying to Cawthorn Park. In Kellington, a small dragon lived there that was killed by a shepherd named Armroy, with nothing other than his shepherd's crook. This is possibly related to the Kellington Serpent Stone, a grave with a cross and a serpent on it. In Wormshell, that is Kent, a nearby hill is reputed to be the resting place for a dragon. In Luanac, that is Cornwell, a dragon lived in a nearby cave, and any human who ventured into them were killed. When St. Samson was in the area, he heard of the dragon. He walked right up to its cave, dragged it out using his linen belt, and threw the creature into the river Aini. 
in Landio Grambin, that is Pius, a dragon once nested in the belfry of the local church, ravaging the neighbors. A blacksmith made a dragon out of iron and set it in the nest when the dragon was away. On returning, the dragon attempted to remove the imposter, and a mechanism triggered thrusting sharp spikes into the creature, killing it. The Greek explorer Herodotus once wrote, There is a place in Arabia to which I went on hearing of some winged serpents. And when I arrived there, I saw bones and spines of serpents in such quantities as should be impossible to describe. The form of the serpents was like that of a water snake, but he had wings without feathers and as like possible to the wings of a bat. It sounds a lot like Herodotus was describing Aeronphorhynchus pterodactyl. There are many other dragon legends, including ancient China, which has many dragon legends. In Babylon, Gilgamesh is said to have killed the dragon, and there are many, many others. In fact, the standard picture of a dragon looks like a composite of many types of dinosaurs. This is exactly what we would expect if dinosaurs were the dragons of old, because over the centuries, the descriptions would have gone mixed together. Without question, Tyrannosaurus is the most famous and most popular of all the dinosaurs. They have also helped provide strong evidence that they are not millions of years old. This soft tissue structure was found inside of a Tyrannosaurus rex bone and justifiably identified as a blood vessel. Now blood vessels should not be there if the bones really were 65 plus million years old. Microscopic structures were squeezed out of the blood vessels, and they looked like blood cells, and this is what the researchers said they were. Some alternative explanations have been proposed, but all the evidence points to these being real T-Rex blood cells. Here are some of the red blood cells within the blood vessels. There can be no doubt that these are actual T-Rex blood cells, but there is no way they could have survived 65 plus million years. Yet evolutionists insist that something must have preserved them, even though they have no real evidence that this is the case. One of the big questions with regards to dinosaurs is, how did they go extinct? The most common theory claimed by evolutionists is a massive asteroid impact, though excessive volcanic activity has also been considered a possibility. Creationist theories include Noah's flood, them being hunted by man, and that they could not adjust to the post-flood environmental changes. Now all theories on dinosaur extinction have one assumption in common, and that is the dinosaurs are extinct. The question needs to be asked, did they go extinct? Because some dinosaurs may still be alive in remote areas. This is a picture taken of Champ, a creature spotted in Lake Champlain between the states of New York and Vermont. It looks like it could be either a seropod dinosaur or a plesiosaur. This critter was found on the shores of Lake Erie. The person who found it was a taxidermist, so he took it home, stuffed it, and mounted it. 
Today it can be seen in the Creation Science Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. This is a picture of the Cornish Sea Serpent photographed in February of 1976 off the coast of England. This picture was drawn by Edward Brian Malway. He was the only survivor of five teens that were scuba diving off the Pensacola Harbor on March 24th, 1962. They were attacked by what appears to be a plesiosaur. Edward was the only survivor. His friends were apparently eaten. This is an illustration of Michelea Bumbe, an animal that seems to be a living seropod dinosaur found in the Congo swamp. It is depicted here next to one of the local natives for comparison. The local natives say they can turn over canoes and yet they hunt them for food. This is a picture of Dr. Mackle holding one of the malumbo plants, which is Michele Bumbe's favorite food. He was told by the natives that the best way to find Michele Bumbe's is to find the malumbo plant in an area with no hippos around. Apparently, Michele Bumbe does not get along well with hippos. Marcelin Agnaga, a biologist from the Congo, drew what he saw in the swamp for an interview. He was convinced that what he saw was a seropod dinosaur. In the Beneni swamps of Madre de Dios, Colonel P.H. Fawcett saw an animal he believed to be a Diplodocus. The Diplodocus account is confirmed by many tribes east of the UKEI. Mebalu 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 is an animal described by natives in an African swamp, the description of which fits a stegosaurus. Buru is another stegosaurus-like animal reported by natives in an African swamp. Sadly, on last report, the natives have not seen them in years and they may have gone extinct, at least locally. There are cases of living or recently dead pterodactyls. They were well known among Indians of the Western United States. They called them the Thunderbird. In Central Africa, there is a pterodactyl-like creature known to the natives as Katamato. In conclusion, there is evidence that man and dinosaurs have lived together. Now, dragon is the old word for dinosaurs, in the Bible does refer to dinosaurs using the old term dragons. There have been reports of sightings of dinosaurs in modern times, so they may not have gone extinct, such that some dinosaurs may still be alive in remote places around the world. Now this evidence is dismissed by evolutionists because it would be a problem for their geologic time scale. However, it is consistent with the biblical account. 